Hi, this is Mike Maloney with Ronnie Stoferle from Incrementum AG again. And in our last episode, we talked about the potential monetary reset where we shift monetary systems once again, just history repeating. And, you know, there was this great meme that I was going to talk about in that episode uh, of uh, uh, COVID being swapped out for global <laughs> or for climate change. So it's an Indiana Jones uh, thing where they're suddenly shifting things on us. Well, that's, this goes right along with the monetary system. So, Ronnie, how are you doing and what have you got for us next? Hey, Mike, good to see you again. Um, well, you know, we could discuss the, the crack up boom perhaps a little bit that um, my fellow countryman Ludwig von Mises talked about in his um, Opus Magnum Human Action. And I think, you know, what, what, what Mises describes is, is, is actually happening um, at the moment because I, I can really sense that people are losing confidence um, in our paper currencies, be it the euro, be it um, the US dollar, whatever. And, and I think it's no coincidence that we're seeing, um, you know, cryptocurrencies doing so well, Al although, of course, there was a pretty big correction recently, um, that stocks are doing so well, that real estate over, all over the world is going crazy, that the art market is going crazy, that we're seeing, um, uh, of course, the bond market still doing pretty well. I think those are all signs for this crack up boom. Um, and what really caught my attention, and you can see it on page two, was uh, an Italian artist selling an invisible sculpture for more than 18,000 US dollars. So um, his name is Salvatore Garau. And <laughs> I, I love the fact, and I think <laughs> I, I'm not sure if, um, if the delivery costs are included. But selling nothing for 18,000 $18, US dollars and then calling it art, that's, that's pretty cool, I would say. But it is a sign. It is a sign for, you know, people just having too much money. They, they really don't know what to do with their liquidity. They're try, trying to get into real assets, although I don't know if that's really a real asset. Um, but it is clearly a sign for... for um, lots of liquidity being out there. Yeah, you know, uh, to me, this is like the signal that you get at the very end of some big, huge uh, economic boom when things go absolutely crazy and this guy is selling nothing for something. Uh, so what else have you got for us here? Well, I would like to talk a bit um, about the, the core topic of our 15th in gold we trust report this monetary climate change and on page seven you can see that um well a while ago and this was the front page uh, in the year, year 2019 we had it on uh, bloomberg business week asking is inflation dead and back then nobody really believed in in rising inflation and now we saw barons um, with with the, the front page about the I word being inflation. So inflation is a topic again. And um, it seems that for our beloved central bankers, it is only temporary. It is only transitory, while from our point of view, it is structural. And as you can see on this chart, I think that's very interesting. We are seeing that for for the very first time in uh, uh, in in the long time, we saw that inflation rates were actually rising already at the beginning of the recession. Now, normally within the course of a recession, um, we're getting more deflationary pressure. We're seeing um, CPI diving, and then of course um, uh, aggressive um, monetary and fiscal policies to counteract that. But in this recession that we experienced last year, um, we saw that inflation rates were already picking up very, very quickly. And I think that's, 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 a, increasing, uh, that's a very interesting sign that this time it might really be different. And um, in the report, we discuss that the most important drivers, why we think 
that it is really structural and not not only transitory. Yeah, I agree. Um, uh, when was the chart generated in your chart book? Because I think it's even higher than this. This is approaching five percent, didn't it? Last yes, month? I, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I think that's that's still with the with the main numbers. Um, yeah. So so it is now even higher, and you know uh, we are still being told that it's 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 transitory and. Uh, you know, there is there's so many numbers that that we could discuss, Mike, but but I think what's what's really uh, very important for this um, uh, for, for for this um, view that we have is, is is on page eight. I think the fact that Janet Yellen, as the former head of the Federal Reserve, is now being the Treasury Secretary, I think the symbolic character um, cannot be underestimated. And from our point of view, um, it is really now fiscal policy that is kind of offsetting um, monetary policy. So I think uh, we, we all discuss Fed policy a lot, but it is becoming more and more irrelevant. And this is exactly what um, many central bankers already said before the COVID crisis. Uh, in their speeches, they always said, well, actually we are running out of tools we can do more QE, whatever, but actually the, the, the biggest tool in our toolbox being interest rate policy, this is basically gone because we, we, we are seeing that negative real rates don't really work. And we see that, um, you know, uh, with uh, rising rates, we would completely choke off the economy. So they always said now it is the time of fiscal policy to, to really make a change. And I think that last year we, we really saw that. So um, I, I think that, this, um, that, that, that market participants should focus much more on the fiscal policy, uh, especially coming from the United States. And I think that the, the big difference is um, monetary policy versus fiscal policy. Um, Fiscal policy works, of course, only for the short term. It's like if you if you drink like two or three Red Bulls, um, of course, the effect kicks in very quickly, but then it fades off very, very quickly too. But we're seeing a much more direct and a faster um, impact and consequence compared to monetary policy, where through quantitative easing, basically, you, you try to stimulate the economy via the banking system but you end up mostly with, um, with asset price inflation. So um, I think now um, as we're seeing um, the economy kind of weakening, uh, at least for most of, the, uh, most of the indicators that we watch, um, I think at some point we will see um, even more aggressive fiscal policy. I think that that uh, big government is back, not only in the US, but all over the world. I think people are accepting now that um, politicians um, want or, or try to um, fine tune the economic cycle. Um, this is well accepted. And I think therefore there will be more packages, more, more fiscal packages for infrastructure, for uh, a greener economy, for um, um, education, whatever. So, so I think this is really um, here to stay. And I think the market will still be surprised by the aggressiveness of fiscal policy that will be ahead. Yeah. Uh, for our viewers, the difference, be so, you know, some people haven't really uh, gotten the difference between monetary and fiscal policy. Monetary policy is set by all of the world's central banks and it's basically how much currency is there going to be and what is the cost of that currency, the interest rate. That's monetary policy. Fiscal policy is what the government does. Are we going to do a bunch of deficit spending? Are we going to take on a bunch more debt? Uh, are we going to pass this bill for roads and this bill for bridges and this bill for schools and this bill for aid to the, uh, you know, uh, you know, stimulus checks? All of that's all fiscal policy. And Ronnie, um, was it... <clears throat> I believe that uh, Chairman Powell uh, made a statement or uh, wrote, I can't remember, uh, saying that the government needs to spend as much as possible, right? You know, spend all you want, 
the Federal Reserve will support it. Didn't he yes. uh, put something like that in, either in writing or in a speech? Yes, yes. Yeah, and, and, and that's like, there's going to be inflation. <laughs> that's what he's saying. <laughs> and, and, and he said, in, I think it was in two, 2018, um, and I think this was really one of the most profound statements that any Fed chairman ever made. He, he said, we would like to smooth out the wild swings of past economic cycles by fine-tuning monetary policy. So, so I think, you know, it is, there, there is no discussion going on um, how much the Federal Reserve should influence markets. I think they, they, they see it as their job, basically, to, to micromanage the economy and, and the inflation and especially financial markets. And, and I think, you know, everybody is talking about uh, tapering now and the Fed um, going on a more, more hawkish path. Although I don't really see that. Um, but I think, you know, we should not forget that probably the, the most important, um, let's say, invisible voting member in the FOMC is the stock market. So everybody thinks that, okay, at some point we will see some tapering. It will be announced at the Jackson Hole meeting probably. Um, we will see uh, rising interest rates end of 2022 or perhaps slightly later. But as soon as we see some volatility in equity markets, as soon as we see the S&P being down 5 or 10%, they will, of course, become more hawkish, uh, more dovish again. And they will say, well, you know, we will, we will continue being on this uh, accommodative path and 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 therefore i think you know actually that the, the fed is i would say the, the federal reserve is trapped um they're they're being basic basically slaves to the bubbles that they blow and there is no way out and everybody who thought okay jay powell is is different because he's not an economist he's not an academic um i think we we learned over the last couple of months that that is just more of the same, and that um, that we shouldn't expect um, uh, anything new coming out of the Federal Reserve. Right, and he's definitely taking a page right out of the Ben Bernanke playbook. <laughs> Whenever anything happens, the solution is create currency. I want to thank you so much uh, for the, the time that you've given me, and this uh, interview is going to be continued. Uh, and I want to wrap up again with that same meme that we opened at. Uh, the whole world monetary system, when I look at charts, just everywhere I look, it looks like it's crumbling right now. It has taken a while. The, the cracks started to appear with the global financial crisis of 2008. But uh, it, it continues. And things go along uh, and continue until the day they don't. And then, you know, suddenly things speed up very fast at the end. So it's important that people get ready. So I wanna thank you very much, Ronnie, for, for this interview. It's very enlightening. Uh, you've got some great charts and great insights. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mike. It's been a pleasure.